Well, good morning from Europe. I'm in uh, Berlin on Ash Wednesday, early in the morning. And I thought we would just sing a little song together. Think about all these people that uh, Christ has uh, gave his life for. And we can uh, reflect on that as we sing together. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, hope for sinners slain. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Hope you're able to worship with these songs, with all the noise, noise, noise that this world gives, that we're able to focus on what Christ has done. Well, it's Ash Wednesday, and I'm here on the beach of the Mediterranean. It's a beautiful spot to be sure, but not where I had intended to be a week ago. Uh, and it struck me as uh, I had the funeral of a dear friend this past week that it is possible to be in a beautiful situation and yet uh, to have our hearts filled with grief, with longing, or with impatience, wondering what God would do. And I was reminded of the story in Mark chapter 11. In a minute, I'll read a few of those verses where Jesus and his disciples are walking along and Jesus is hungry and Jesus sees a, a fig tree and he goes over to see whether there's any fruit on it and there's not and so Jesus curses the tree and then uh, the next day Mark tells us that in the morning as they went along they saw the fig tree withered from the roots Peter remembered and said to Jesus rabbi look the fig tree that you cursed has withered have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you start praying, when you stand praying, excuse me, if you hold anything against anyone, if you hold anything against one, anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Those words from Jesus are hard to believe. I expect it's probably less hard for us to believe that Jesus cursed a fig tree and the next day it withered than it is for us to believe that if and when we ask God for something, that if we believe that we have received it, it will be given to us. That kind of teaching in our day and age has been abused by many people, uh, especially those known as health and wealth preachers. People who say all you need to do with what you want is ask God and if you love him enough or if you try hard enough or believe hard enough, you'll get it. Too many of us, as we think about this season and maybe as we think about all seasons of our life, we have experienced too often a request from God that went unanswered, or that was denied, or a situation that we did not hope to be in that turned out so differently 
than we had wanted or intended. And so it's hard for us to take Jesus at his word. <clears throat> it's hard for us to want to believe what Jesus says. That if we ask in faith and, he be and we believe that we have received, that God will give us what he wants. This Ash Wednesday, historically, Christians uh, around the world gather to prepare our hearts to walk with Jesus through life and death, through suffering and pain for 40 days. One of the marks of Ash Wednesday historically has been uh, an ashen cross that uh, a leader of the church would mark on someone's forehead. You may not know, but the ashes of those that are used on Ash Wednesday are usually made from the palm branches of the previous, sun, previous year's Palm Sunday. Ash Wednesday itself is a testament, a testimony of faith. It's the belief that even as we walk through Jesus in suffering, there is new life that comes from the ashes of Jesus' triumph, which has gone before. This year, our theme for Lent is how long? How long, O oh Lord? There's a song we're going to sing uh, each week in Lent, as often as we can. How long will you turn your face away? How long will you hear us when we pray? How long until we walk this pilgrim way? How long? Many of us uh, in the Reformed tradition may be familiar with the kingdom language that talks about God's kingdom already come and not yet fully realized. We believe and we say with faith that Jesus is already king of the earth. He is already ruling over the whole world from heaven. And the mode of his rule is in the hearts and in the lives of his people. So Jesus is already king, but his kingdom is not yet fully come, not yet fully realized or recognized by people on earth, and not fully celebrated or realized because our earth is still in the midst of suffering, of grief, of pain, and of unanswered prayer, or rather, prayer in which the answer is no. But this is where we begin, and I want to invite you to begin with me. Perhaps you find yourself sitting also in a beautiful place. Perhaps you find yourself sitting in an ugly place, a hospital, or a transit bus, or an empty house. Maybe you're in a space filled with people, but you feel like you're alone. Regardless of the space in which you sit, we're not marking uh, people this year. I'm not physically present in Calgary, but we're not marking people this year with ashes. And yet as we step into and begin the Lenten season, this Ash Wednesday, I want to invite you with me to begin it in the hope of the resurrection. To believe that new life can come from the ashes of our king who rode into the Jerusalem come from the ashes of his life. I'm speaking metaphorically. I hope that's clear. But I also want you, or want to invite you, to sit, to sit in that tension between the promises of Jesus, the life of Jesus, and the kingdom of God that is not yet fully here. strikes me that the answers and the hope that we are looking for is much deeper than I could do in a trite 
eight to 10 minutes. But I will maintain with words of faith and in challenge and invite you to join me in that. That just because our hope is not trite, it does not mean our hope is not real. That just because the profound reality of Jesus' resurrection life with us and his life within us as we walk this pilgrim way, just because it can't be mashed into a tweet, especially in difficult times, it doesn't make it less real. So I hope that you'll join the rest of our church as we call out to God in these next 40 days, as we wonder how long. God bless you. God keep you. God has make his face shine upon you like this beautiful sun and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you his peace. So then whatever situation you find yourself, the light of God will shine upon you. You'll experience his honor, his love, and his joy, even in the midst of the challenges of life.